How is it that every time a valuable gem is found in a new area, people always gravitate to it like they're gonna strike gold and never have to work again? Honestly, I'd probably do the same, even to a remote alien moon. That's exactly what happens in 2018's Prospect, but of course it isn't a smooth ride. Spoiler alert for those that haven't seen the movie yet, and while this is my opinion, it's no substitute for watching it for yourself. Links to the film are in the description. For a film about space scavengers, this was the last kind of music I expected, but I'm digging it. Here we open up with C, a young girl who is traveling across space to scavenge for a rare gem on a toxic planet. This is one of the most intricate space stations I've seen in a film in a while, and you can see that the moon is just covered in a toxic green gas. How did they even find this gem in the first place? As the space station prepares for its final orbit around the moon, C goes to get ready to embark on her landing. It's here that we meet Damon, her father, who's also preparing for their landing on the moon. Turns out that since this is the last rotation of the space station, the two of them could end up stranded on the moon if they don't make it back in time. We have three cycles for the job before we have to catch the sling back. Plenty of time. Yeah, I'm not gonna trust that. I feel like a drug habit is a terrible thing to feed into on a potentially dangerous, time-sensitive mission on a deadly planet. As Damon tries to tell C the story of her birth, C pleads for them to go back to their home planet. Soon, you get out of the gutter jobs are just, you know, Temporary. Yeah, I'm not gonna trust that either. After the two of them go to sleep, the alarm sounds for their time to get ready to depart. Is he really reading the manual on how to fly the ship? Shouldn't you be pretty confident in flying a spaceship if you're gonna be flying your daughter around? There's something about watching yourself fall from a space place to a dangerous abyss. What was that? Not good is what that was. Sure enough, the two of them start hitting the atmosphere with such intensity that Damon can't steer the ship properly. As they continue their descent, he tries to hold the ship together as they crash land on the toxic moon. After C finds where they landed on the map, Damon decides that it's still a good idea to go looking for the gems, even though their ship is broken and they only have so much time before they're abandoned. Yeah, I'd be worried too. Cool little bit of info, the little particles of gas dust you see on the planet isn't CGI. It's actually basement dust that was thrown into the air to give the moon its gaseous effect. After a quick comms and air filter check, the two of them set out. It's an old ore like dig. Leftovers from the rush. So they aren't even there for the initial rush, they're actually more like scavengers trying to find what's left after everyone else got their goods. Soon the two of them try to see if the last crew missed anything at the dig site. Ew, is the planet alive with these things? After they remove the sack and cut it open, they uncover another sack which they burn away the flesh to show the gem they've been digging for all this time. I'm not gonna lie, it looks really pretty, almost like the opposite of the amber fossils in Jurassic Park. After Damon tells C how much that single gem called Oralek is worth, C tries to reason with him that they should return now while they still can. Of course, this isn't enough for Damon and he insists that they continue inward. If we miss the sling, this is not up for discussion. I have a feeling he'll wish he had listened to her. After C refills their water, she goes to return to Damon, but Damon calls over the radio that men are approaching their site. As she watches Damon try and reason with the strangers, we meet Ezra, who is questioning him. It's Damon. Nice to meet you, Damon. I'm Ezra. <laughs> Ezra tries to prod information out of Damon, but Damon continues to try and play dumb. At this point, why wouldn't you just give him what he wants? Is that one gem really worth your life in the long haul of things? After Ezra is disappointed by Damon's lack to cooperate, he begins to use force to find out where his ship is. But Damon has a counteroffer. He decides to tell Ezra about the location of a massive deposit of the Aurelic. This intrigues Ezra. The Queen's Lair. That's a theory. At this point, who's to say whether it's a real place or an old urban legend? Damon thinks it's worth his life though, and he tries to recruit Ezra and his companion to go get the Oralek themselves if they let him live. Ezra agrees naturally. This is so exciting. We all know where this is headed. As Damon is escorted by Ezra and his companion, C follows closely behind with the gun.
Drop it! Drop it! Tell us to drop it! Drop it! If a little girl came rushing out of a toxic moon forest aiming a gun at me, I'd probably be a little nervous too. This is something I have never seen. In all my time in the green, a little girl. Come to think of it, why would you drag your underage daughter to a hostile, toxic moon in the first place? Now that the tables are turned, Damon tries to force Ezra to give up his spoils of Orlek before Damon and C escape. If he hadn't been so greedy, things might have gone a little different. Now C is left stranded with a dangerous stranger. What does she do? Where does she think she's gonna run to? Her father just got shot to death, the dropship is damaged, and she's about to get chased by a man that could probably outrun her no problem. You gotta admire her quick thinking at least. Eventually, Ezra makes his way to C's dropship where she is waiting for him. That's a damn good shot, considering C is a little girl that has never had to shoot someone. Very nice. Of course, pulling the trigger on a defenseless man is a little different afterwards. Give her weights, girl. Shoot her help. I'd be impatient too if the girl that just shot me was just gonna let me bleed out like that. Just get it done. C has other plans though. She tries to barter his life for a ride back to the freighter, but he won't talk until she helps him fix his gunshot wound. As cool as it seems to use something like extinguisher foam to seal a wound, it looks like it would hurt like hell. Let's not question the girl holding a gun to you right after you killed her father. I'd rather not test my luck. After a while, the two of them set out to find the mercs Damon had been working for. They plan to harvest all of the queen's lair and escape with it all. In the meantime, Ezra needs medical attention, so they venture to a nearby community of religious scavengers. As Ezra tells them what they'll offer in return for help, one of the boys brings out everything he asks for and more. Here is our offer. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Put a go. Should have seen that coming. I'm pretty sure she's the first and only female on that moon in forever. Naturally, C runs, but she is chased after by one of the members. Look how fast he runs after her, like a small space terminator. After a quick chase, C loses her pursuer and continues on her way solo. As she journeys to the edge of the forest, she hears a voice over the radio that makes her turn around and go back. When she stumbles onto a tent, who does she find inside? You look like shit. Nice to know we're so comfortable with each other now. Were you going to give me to them? No. Are we really gonna believe that? This man has been shot and left for dead by this girl. Do you really think he wouldn't have given her up in a heartbeat to survive? Either way, she agrees to help perform an operation on the gunshot wound that she inflicted. At least he's putting on a strong face for her. The sound of the cutting tool on flesh is enough to make anyone queasy. I thought her cutting flesh sounded bad enough. Between the sound of her cutting bone and Ezra's face here, I don't think I'd ever risk prospecting on an alien moon. <laughs> Did she just chuck his arm like some random trash? Hopefully he wasn't a righty. After the amputation, the two of them set off for the queen's lair again. By nighttime, they come across the mercs. Common sense says get on the spaceship and get out of there, right? Right? When it comes time to dig, I'll need you sharp. I never harvested one-handed. I'm gonna need some help. Seriously, you even admit you're at a disadvantage. Get out of there! Of course, the two of them try to renegotiate the original deal with the mercs. Then we're not going to dig. Well, now, what she means to say is that while transport is a requisite part of the deal, She's awfully ballsy for someone that doesn't have a weapon anymore. These mercs could just shoot them without breaking a sweat. I don't think this is the time to refuse anything. Ezra gets it. After some aggressive negotiations, everyone comes to an agreement that works out for everyone. I stand corrected from earlier. It really is real. The anatomy of this whole process is confusing. The planet literally sounded like it was crying in pain. Is it alive? Is it just the acid melting? Could you imagine having a fortune in your hands just to watch it dissolve away? And you've got mercs with guns watching you lose their money. Talk about working under pressure. C and Ezra try over and over again with the same results. After some time, the mercs are getting restless and they start questioning Ezra's ability to do the job. To keep the mercs happy, C jumps into the crater and performs the process of salvaging Orelek only to have the sack dissolve just like Ezra's. The Merc decides that they can't perform the job and he begins to walk away. 
Never turn your back on anyone in this movie. Literally everyone is out to get the next person. It blows my mind how some of these characters have survived as long as they have. C has got to be one of the quickest thinkers on this whole moon. She always seems to find a way out of these situations. As the dust settles, Ezra manages to down one of the mercs, but they're chased back into the forest by the last one. As C attacks the merc, the merc stabs Ezra, but he's not going down just yet. I swear, the second I heard the sound of the cutting tool turn on, I got shivers down my spine. As Ezra sits against a tree dying, C starts to question whether she can save him or not. She runs to gather supplies, then she returns to Ezra. She's gonna have to piece him back together by the time the movie's over. C has caused Ezra more pain trying to save him than she did when she shot him originally. The two of them hobble back to the Merc ship and they take off to get back to the freighter in orbit. This girl has lost her father, lost all of her belongings, almost got sold, and ended up escaping with her father's killer, but at least she's able to be thankful to make it out at least. With that last smile, the screen cuts to the credits. All in all, it's the classic escape from a bad situation with the last person you'd expect as an ally kind of movie, but it changes enough things to make it a fresh take on a classic story. Definitely worth a watch. While that's my opinion of the movie, I'll leave it up to you to decide what you think. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to see more and comment a film you think I should watch next. I'll see you in the next video.